Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, we are going to tackle part two of our World's Best Sock series, which is going to be our log ingestion piece of the platform. This will be a tool that will be responsible for collecting logs from our firewall devices, our Wazoo Manager, uh, really anything we want to collect logs from. Graylog is actually going to be the tool that handles that for us. Graylog will serve as our kind of universal log collector. And kind of what I mean by that is we'll be collecting logs from various types of sources. That could be our endpoint, our endpoint devices that we're using our Wazoo agent to collect logs from. That could be us configuring our firewalls to send to forward their syslog logs to our gray log box so we can ingest those into our scene. That could be us plugging into any third party services such as, you know, some third parties enable like a syslog, usually like fire hose kind of thing is what they'll call it, where they essentially forward all of their logs in a syslog format to whatever device you want to send them to. And that'll allow you to collect logs and events from maybe, you know, you're using a third party antivirus uh, that you want to make sure that you're bringing detections and stuff into your scene. So you're not having to jump to that console to view alerts. Uh, Graylog is a great tool to handle all of these various scenarios. And Graylog will also not only ingest the logs, but it will allow us to clean the logs up. It'll allow us to enrich the logs. It'll allow us to do a lot of fun things that we'll get into here in later videos. Another great benefit of Graylog is actually able to write logs to disk if it's back in storage that it's writing all the logs to is currently down or is telling Graylog, hey, I need you to slow down because I can't keep up. So Graylog also serves as like a, almost like a caching mechanism to where we have a little bit of buffer zone. So let's say, let's say our Wazoo indexer goes down, Graylog is able to detect that and actually say, okay, I'm gonna write these logs to disk so I don't lose the logs, right? Otherwise, Graylog would forward, would try to forward it and our Wazoo indexer would be down. So those logs actually wouldn't be stored. So we would be blind to those logs during that time period when the Wazoo indexer was down. But Graylog will actually write those to disk. So that'll buy us a little, uh, a little more time to get the Wazoo indexer back into a healthy state. And then once it's back online, Graylog will forward all of its events. So it's also... You know, that's not a true, uh, redundant, highly available solution, but it, it is really nice because it, you know, rather than just losing everything, you have a little bit of leeway to get the Wazoo indexer back up and in a healthy state. In the last video, we deployed our backend storage. So now we need to deploy the tool that will actually write the logs to our backend storage. You know, previously, and if you have been working with Wazoo for a while, you've probably used a Filebeat or a Logstash to write your logs from your Wazoo manager directly to the Wazoo indexer. But now we're actually going to put Graylog in the middle because we can do a lot more fancier things. You can do similar things with Logstash and Filebeat, but to be honest, I think Graylog makes it a lot easier. Um, I guess you guys will be the judge of that, but we have a much nicer web interface that we can, it, so we're not having to write any config files or YAML files, right? We're able to do it all within the web UI and Graylog comes with a lot of pre-built features already in it, which makes it a lot easier for us to just pick up and go, which is really nice. So, so a little bit of flow of how the data will actually get from, you know, from an endpoint to gray log to the Wazoo indexer is, so our monitor endpoints are going to be running a Wazoo agent. A guy, the Wazoo agents are going to be configured to point their logs to our Wazoo manager. We're going to deploy Fluent on our Wazoo manager and we'll get, we'll get into that in later videos. And he is actually going to essentially grab the alerts.json file. So very similar to what Filebeat was doing and send them to a listening input within Graylog. Graylog is going to ingest that JSON, run it through its pipelines, which we'll get into in later videos, and then write it to our Wazoo indexer. So we're essentially putting this guy in the middle between any of our raw logs and our backend storage, because we don't just want to receive these logs in their raw format. That can be a nightmare when it comes to building our dashboards, our alerting. Your future self will hate your past self if you don't take the time to 
have a universal procedure of how you're cleaning up these logs because it'll it'll just make your job a lot more difficult in the future. So I gray and gray log is the perfect tool that allows us to do this. We can also collect our syslog messages, right? So here I just have uh, third party syslog forwarders. So for example, silence and no one uh, are both that I've worked with in the past that allows this type of functionality. And so I open up a port on my firewall and forward that to our gray log. And we're then also able to ingest logs from any syslog forwarders and normalize those and then stuff those into our backend storage. So it allows us to be super flexible no matter of what type of logs we're looking to ingest. Graylog gives us the ability to do that. And if you'd like to follow along with the commands that will run throughout this video, I have posted a medium post that has the commands detailed. So that'll be linked in the description below. So if you want to follow along, that'll be there for you. Uh, we'll skip past the kind of intro uh kind of why Greylog. we kind of talked about that a little bit already one big thing to note and actually i do want to highlight this Greylog only supports up to elastic before the license change so 7.10.2 i believe is the latest version actually it looks like dot x i i pulled this table uh, directly from Greylog site 7.10 of Elastic is the latest version of Elasticsearch that Greylog will support, and it does not yet support OpenSearch 2.x. The Wazoo Indexer is a forked version of OpenSearch, I think it's 1.3, but I'm sure OpenSearch 2.x is probably, I, I can't imagine they won't support that. They just haven't released a version that can integrate with OpenSearch 2.x yet. Thankfully, the Wazoo Indexer is not built on is not a version of open search 2.x so hopefully by the time wazoo actually upgrades their wazoo indexer to open search 2.x i have no idea what their kind of internal plans are for that but hopefully by that time Greylog will have caught up so i mentioned also Greylog supports multiple different inputs and that'll be a look more clear as we kind of poke through the web ui here in a sec once we actually install and gray log but they have pre-built inputs that will allow us to ingest just a few clicks any uh, aws cloud trail logs any of the beats uh gelf standard uh gelf which is gray logs like own unique like extended log format i think is what it's called it is slowly getting traction so i guess only time will tell how much more popular that that becomes uh syslog of course any of our raw plain text so like our, our json logs that will our our wazoo alerts will consume in a json log format so we'll configure our raw plain text ingester and then we'll build a decoder that's all built off that json format but we will talk about that in later videos and much more are supported as well you can you can even stand up an input that actually invokes an api to bring in data which is really cool too so on let's say every five minutes i want to run an api request out to whatever i'm doing maybe i want to load uh maybe i want to load the weather or something and i want to bring that data in Greylog actually allows us to do that so Greylog will make the api request uh, bring the data in uh, normalize it and enrich it with whatever you are defining and then write it into elastic so that's really cool too and one thing to note, you do want to have policies around your indexes because these actually are storing data that is being written to disk, which if your disk fills up, then you can't actually, then you have no room to write your current ingesting logs or any of your future logs. So if you're not doing some of this index cleanup that will clear some of your disk space for future logs, you'll eventually run out of storage. We don't want to have to do that manually. And Greylog actually handles that for us, which is a really nice feature as well. So again, with the log normalization, which I feel like I've beat like a dead horse by now. So I'll just kind of quickly gloss over this, but I do kind of want to really get this point home to you guys is that let's say, for example, our firewalls are storing the metadata of our source IP addresses within a field source underscore IPv4. And we're also ingesting Sysmon events and that those source IP addresses are being written to a data field uh, called data underscore when event data underscore source IP. I want to be able to map these to the same field name. 
So regardless if I ingested them from the firewall or if I ingested them from Sysmon, I want to be able to write these to the same field name. And that field name is going to be source underscore IP. And this will allow our SOC team to run searches a lot faster because they're only having to do it on one data field rather than the two. So as a SOC analyst, I only have to run a query for the value within this field rather than the value within this field, and then as well, this field. So that's, that's double the time and just adds more complexity to your processes. And Graylog allows us to, to, to do that. I do also recommend kind of keeping a running spreadsheet of the fields that you have normalized, and that'll just allow you to kind of keep track of things a little better, as, especially as you start to ingest more and more different log sources. You want to keep track of what you've done. So just an easy spreadsheet is something I'd recommend just to help keep you organized. Another awesome feature of Graylog is within real time, before we actually write these logs to the Wazoo indexer, Graylog is able to take, let's say in our example, our source IP address, and make a call up to VirusTotal and say, hey, do you have any hits for this? VirusTotal will respond. Graylog will receive the response and then populate our raw message with the contents of the response. So here in this example, we see VirusTotal said, responded with 10 malicious hits, uh, one suspicious, 73 harmless. Here we get the threat URL. So we're able to enrich our logs within real time, which is another awesome feature that we can then build alerts off of, dashboards off of, and is an awesome feature of Graylog. And we also talked about the no data loss. Now, this isn't a permanent no data loss, right? So we talked about how if our Wazoo indexer is down, Graylog will write the logs to disk until the Wazoo indexer is in a healthy state. This will run out eventually because Graylog is writing to disk. So if Graylog's disk fills up and has no more room to write these logs because the elastic because the Wazoo indexer is still not healthy, then we will lose logs. So Graylog will buy us a little bit of time. Don't assume that if your Wazoo indexer goes down, you're okay for a few days or a week because Graylog is keeping your data. You still want to make it a priority to get the Wazoo indexer back up and running in a healthy state so Graylog can release these logs. So on my right here, I have the server that I will be installing Graylog on, and I also have the Wazoo indexer running on this same server. And this is a Debian 11 box, if you are following along. Uh, Graylog also supports CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu, and I think AWS Linux too, so it, it supports a wide range of, of operating systems. But in but in this tutorial, I will be deploying it on a Debian 11. Let me maybe make that even a little bigger. So let's first go ahead and install our prereqs. So we'll just run a few kind of app updates. Graylog is dependent on Java. So we will be installing Java 11, and that'll be similar to your other Linux distros as well. And all right, so we got our Java installed. That looks good. Now, another piece that we haven't introduced yet is going to be MongoDB. M MongoDB is going to hold the configuration data of Graylog, and this can either be on, if you're running Graylog just as a single node, this can be on the same server that you're, that you've in that you're installing Graylog on or it could be on a different server completely. We would just have to point Graylog to it within the configuration. This is, MongoDB is very lightweight in terms of what Graylog is doing with it. So I'm just going to deploy it on the same server as my Graylog, but this is a prereq. We need to do this before we install, we install Graylog, or Graylog will not start up correctly. So let's go ahead and run these commands here. And so let's first grab our the MongoDB uh, GPG key to add it. Uh, no valid open PGP data found. Uh, do we have our CA certificate? Okay, we have that. Let me try adding that to my bash RC.
And I think I can run like the source. All right, let's try that install again. No, is this even exist? Specify key does not exist. All right, um, see if we can grab it the old fashioned way. So we we're looking for what server 4.3. Yeah, there is no server 4.3. So I'll just bump it one up to the 4.4. So I'll go 4.4. Okay, we got that one now. So let me change the GitHub real quick to reflect that. I wonder why, why did 4.3 get removed? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If any of you guys know in the comments, uh, leave a comment, please. I'm kind of curious. That's kind of weird. Uh, I'm kind of curious about that. So, okay, let me update that. Okay, so we've been, we've got our GPG key. Now let's get our repo. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and run an app update. And we should have gotten our Mongo repo. Okay, good. That all looks good. And let's go ahead and now install our MongoDB. All right, and we're grabbing yeah, version 4.4. .4. Okay, good. Now, we don't need to make any config changes to Mongo. All we simply need to do is just start it. So a little bit of live troubleshooting is always fun. <laughs> and now we have our MongoDB service started. And if I do a system CTL status, MongoD. All right, we see we're active and running. Okay, good. So MongoDB is checked off. So installing Graylog is also relatively easy. Just a few commands here. Hopefully, we don't run into any uh, version issues here. We're just going to use their .dev package, copy that, and now let's actually install Graylog. And from a install perspective, we are all good. Assuming that that was good. Yeah, and it looks like that was. So, okay, good. And now we should have our new directory created under ETC should be gray log. And we have our server directory. And this is where our server.conf will reside, which will be our config file. At first we actually, because we're using HTTPS to encrypt the logs from gray log to the Wazoo indexer, we need to add the certificate to, we need to add the root CA that signed our certificate to the Java key store so that Java won't error out and say, Hey, I don't trust this certificate because, because it's not signed by a CA that I trust. So we first need to go ahead and do that. So I'm first going to create a directory just called certs under ETC Graylog server certs. So now if I go back into server. We now see our search directory. I am now going to copy the CA certs version of Java that we're using to this new directory that I've created. So if you're using a different version of Java, your path will, will be different. Um, so you'll just need to follow that out. And a way we can kind of do that is I'll just kind of go through it easily. So I'll do a CP a say slash user slash lib slash JVM. And if I tab here, we see my version of Java 11. If you're using a different version of Java, you would of course have, have different directories here. So I'm going to go into my Java 11 dash open JDK slash lib slash security. And then my CA certs. So I'm going to so this is the file I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy that into Etsy gray log server certs. And I'm just going to call it CA certs. I'm just going to call it, give it the same file name. So now if I go into my search directory here within gray log, we now see our CA certs. And now let's place our actual root CA within this directory as well. So if you follow the last video, we created our self-signed certs. And I know my root CA is actually stored within my Wazoo indexer certificates directory as well. So I'm just going to copy it, copy it there. So I'm going to say, or copy it from there. So I'm going to just go ahead and say, copy. 
Um, etc. Wazoo indexer. Then what did I certs and then root ca dot pim. And I'm gonna copy that into Etsy. Create log server certs, and I'll just give it the same name root ca dot pim. So now if I ls that out, okay, we see that is good. Now let's actually run the now let's actually import the cert into our Java key store. So I'm going to do that with just running this command here. You could, of course, change your storage password and alias of it if you would like. It's not required, um, but you could if you want. And I actually need to now change that to point to my root CA. So we'll go ahead and run this. It is asking us here at the bottom, do you want to trust this certificate? I'll go ahead and say yes. So now our certificate was added to the Java key store. Now let's go ahead and actually do our configuration of Greylog before we go ahead and bring it up. So there are two things we need to run immediately before we open this file. That's going to be, we need to create our password secret and our root password that we'll use to log into the web UI. The password secret will be for will be what Greylog uses internally, but the root password is what we will keep track of to log into the web UI. And we can create a password secret with just the pwgen uh, command that'll output this here. So I'll go ahead and open my server.conf. And if I scroll down a page, you'll see our password secret. So I'll go ahead and paste that value within there. I'll save and get out of that. And now let's create a hashed value of our root password. So I'll go ahead and paste this in here. It's going to ask me to enter a password. So I'll enter the password of my choice. Let's call it password. And now it has dumped a hashed value of my password. So I'll go ahead and copy that and open up again the server.conf and go down to the root underscore password block and paste that within there. So now when we log into the web UI, we will log in as our root user with the password of just password in this case, because we are a security channel after all. <laughs> now let's go ahead and configure our connection to the Wazoo indexer. That, I'll say admin and boom. So let's first create a user account for our Greylog user that's going to connect to Elastic. So I'm going to go into, that's going to connect to our Wazoo indexer. So I'm going to go into the security, internal users. I'll say create an internal user, give it a username of Greylog. And one important thing um, before setting your password, Greylog will error out if the password has any special characters within it. So avoid using dollar signs, hashtags, just stick to alphabetical characters and numbers for your for your password. Otherwise, Greylog will error out on that and it'll and you may spend a lot of time troubleshooting trying to figure out what the issue is. So I'm just gonna give it a password of please subscribe. Because Greylog will be doing our index management, writing to Elastic, reading from Elastic, I'm actually just, I'm going to give it the admin role. And all right, so we got that created. So under my Elasticsearch hosts, we're going to first do our username. So I'll say Greylog. And then I'm gonna separate it here with just a colon. And I'm gonna say, please subscribe because that's the password. Because that's the password that I set. So please subscribe. Now this will be the DNS name of our Wazoo indexer, which I remember I added just to the Etsy host file. So I'll remove the node one. So it'll be at ingest.sockfortress.local. And then the port that the Wazoo indexer is listening on is 9200. So let's go ahead and save that. There are a lot of other advanced tweaks you can make for better performance. This config file is massive. Uh, so you can really start to get sophisticated with like your output batch, your the number of, of buffer processors that you want to set, which you know maybe I'll get into in a later video for some more advanced gray log tuning to handle higher loads of logs.
The MongoDB, so if you've set it to your local host like what we've done, by default, you won't need to make any config changes to where MongoDB is. But if you have MongoDB deployed on another server, then you'll have to instruct Graylog of where that is. So let's go ahead and save this off. And let's now go ahead and just start Graylog. So I'm first going to hit it with a daemon reload. And I'm going to enable it. So Graylog will start at boot time. We'll go ahead and start it. And I'll go ahead and set it active. Now let's go ahead and tail the log file. Uh, Hostname not verified, but we added it to the keys. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we added it to our key store, but we need to change the Graylog's default Java options to read from our new key store. That, that we copied over into our search directory under ETC Graylog. Uh, so we actually need to do that first. I skipped over that. So let's go ahead and I will actually add to the medium post uh, to how to do that. So I'll add the commands there if you're following along. But first, let's open our uh, Etsy default. So it's going to be under ETC slash default. And then there's going to be Graylog server. So here we see our default Java options that Graylog is using. And we're actually going to scroll down here. And I'm just going to comment this line out. And I'm going to add my new Java options here. So I'll paste that there. So we're handling our log4j exploit. So that's fine. Now here is what we've added. Let me kind of expand this out. You see the trust store, the Java trust store, is now pointing to the CA certs file that we copied over into our Graylog server certs, right? So we need to tell Graylog, hey, this is the key store. This is the trust store I want you to use. And that's, that's where we were missing. And then we also have our trust store password. If you used a different value than what I did for just change it, which of course I recommend, um, then you would need to reflect whatever password you've set there as well. We could also change, so similar to Elastic, to what we did with our Wazoo indexer, you could change the Java heap uh, that you want to use, which I'll just leave at one at the moment because this is just a demo environment. If you are running this in production, I'd recommend allocating half of your memory that is available to the box to Graylog. So if you have 16 gigs of memory, reserve space, reserve eight gigs of space for Graylog to you to consume uh, at runtime. So we'll go ahead and save this off. Okay, now I'll just hit it with the daemon reload. I'll go ahead and run a restart. And now we should hopefully establish our connection. And all right, so we are now connecting to Elastic. So good. So apologies about that. <laughs> it took a little live troubleshooting, but that never hurt anybody. You're, you're never learning if things, if things work correctly the first time is uh, my take on it. So uh, let's make sure Graylog is exposing the port that we're going to use to connect to it. And it's actually just throwing it on the loop back. So I'm actually going to change that. So I'm actually going to change that so I can connect to it and that'll be done under the HTTP bind address. So I'm just going to throw it to any listening interface. So to any interface on the box. I highly recommend not exposing that to the public internet. If somebody malicious got into your Graylog web interface, they could screw up a ton of things. So keep that internal. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and say restart Graylog server. And that'll now restart. Let's do our net stat. And not up yet. Not up yet. Okay, there we go. We say listening on port 9000. So let's go ahead and connect to the web UI. We'll go say if config, I'll copy the public IP address. So, okay, now we have been prompted to log in and our password is going to be 
The root username is going to be admin. Uh, that's what they use by default. You could change this if you want by uncommenting this setting here and setting it to a different name. So I'll go ahead and call it admin. And then our password is going to be the clear text value of this, which in our case, it was just password. So I'll input password. And now we are in to gray log. And if we look at our system nodes, uh, we see everything is processing okay. Of course, we're not receiving any logs yet. Um, and yeah, we're getting a warning because we haven't configured any inputs, which is fine. We see our Elasticsearch cluster is healthy and in a green state, so that's good. By default, Graylog will, at, when it first starts up, it'll create Graylog indexes. So which we'll cover later on, but we see that our gray log has now written system indexes into our Wazoo indexer. So if we go into our Wazoo indexer, go to our index management and under indices, we see these new indexes have been written here. So everything looks good. We have installed gray log and we have connected it to our Wazoo indexer. So I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.